In our series, Meet the House Agricultural Committee, Illinois Corn Talks Policy with Illinois' delegation impacting our industry. Hear now from Congresswoman Nikki Badinsky from Illinois' 13th District. So we can go ahead and jump right in. Um, what I really am excited to talk to you a little bit about is just your time on the House Ag Committee. I know um, yeah. you're new to the committee, new to Congress, and you know this is something that maybe you've been talking about before you were in this position. So can you yeah. just tell me a little bit about what it felt like to be appointed to this committee and really represent ag in your district in this way? Yeah, I'm inc incredibly excited to be on the House Agriculture Committee um, for a lot of different reasons. I think most importantly, the work of the committee really touches on a lot of different, uh, really important interests that the communities of Central and Southern Illinois have. Whether it's supporting our family farmers, we are top commodity producers of corn, soybean, and pork. So I always want to be a good advocate for our farmers and those commodities and the work that we do in Central and Southern Illinois to produce them. Um, and that leads us to other innovations, I think, within the agricultural space. I'm a very big supporter of biofuels. Um, I'm excited to be a co-lead on the Next Generation Fuels Act. Um, again, a bipartisan bill that will support our family farmers and corn producers um, through biofuels. As you know, we're reducing our carbon footprint. And then ultimately, and probably most importantly, reducing the price of the pump for our consumers. So, I call it a win-win-win. Uh, serving on the House Agriculture Committee, I get to be the best advocate for those types of issues. Um, and then, you know, I also have an opportunity to be um, a really strong advocate for ag agricultural education. We have a world-class ACES program at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, my alma mater. Um, so I always want to be a good partner to the U of I. But in addition, we have some great community colleges. I rolled out my agriculture Advisory Council um, for the 13th Congressional District, specifically at Lincoln Land Community College in Springfield. Lincoln Land has a great agricultural um, education program. Parkland Community College, which is also in Champaign, was the first community college to get uh, certified in precision agriculture as an educational curriculum. And so um, great innovative work happening in the agricultural education space that I really want to be lifting up on the committee um, that supports a lot of our, um, our communities throughout Central and Southern Illinois. And then just lastly, Haley, I would also mention rural development. It's one of um, the important subcommittees that I get to serve on. We have uh, smaller communities that really stitch together the 13th Congressional District, and we face a lot of unique challenges in our rural communities, whether it's access to health care, economic development, workforce development. Those are the types of things that I really want to be focused on, and serving on the House Agriculture Committee is a great fit for being able to lift up those issues. I love that you talked about the Next Generation Fuels Act, so I'm going to ask you a little bit about that. Um, we are so glad to have you as a, um, a sponsor on that, and yeah. um, just wanted to ask you a little bit, you know, can you explain why you are such a big supporter of this bill and then the ethanol industry? Yeah, so I would go back to kind of what we were talking about before. I refer to biofuels as really a triple win for us. One, it supports our family farmers. We are, you know, Illinois is the second uh, most producing uh, state in the country when it comes to corn. We produce a lot of corn. So we're supporting our family farmers with um, increased use of ethanol mix and biofuels. You know, I want to note that I also very much support a year round E15 blend. I was really excited when the EPA recently put out the, sa the summer sales of E15 blend. We need to be doing that just year round. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and the reason it makes sense, again, is it does support our family farmers, but E15, ethanol, biofuels, all of that, it reduces our carbon footprint. And that's something that we want to be really encouraging and taking advantage of opportunities to do that while we're tackling the climate crisis that we have. Um, and then also, I think, thirdly, you know, I do think more of an E15 and ethanol mix in our for our light body vehicles is going to reduce the price at the pump. Um, and so it really is, I think, a, a great win for everyone. It's why we need to be um, continuing to find new and innovative ways to use biofuels. You know, we talked about the University of Illinois, Haley, but Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville actually has um, a biotech research center that they specialize in 
biofuels and how we can apply biofuels, not just to our light body vehicles, but I'm also very excited about the news around aviation fuel and using ethanol and a biofuel mix um, in our aviation fuel. I think all that is really positive for our farmers and for communities throughout central and southern Illinois. Yes, well, we're, we're glad to hear all of that. That is such so encouraging. Good. <laughs> um, yes, and we talked a little bit about, you know, the people in your district and the farmers in your district. And so, mm -hmm. you know, in Illinois, 96% of farms are family owned and operated. Yeah. And, um, you know, that is a lot just like your district. And so what are some of these farm bill priorities then that you're hearing from those family farmers in your area? Well, one of the th issues that I'm really looking forward to tackling is how are we cultivating the next generation of farmers? You know, we have right now the average age of a family farmer in this country is 57 years old. Um, the ratio of farmers that are over 60 to those farmers that are under the age of 35, six to one, six to one more farmers on the higher end of the age um, age range. And so we need to really identify great people like you that go through our ACEs program at the University of Illinois who are going to be those young farmers of the future. I'm really excited to be co-leading with the Agricultural Committee Chair G.T. Thompson, the Young Farmer Success Act, which is really a way to acknowledge that family farming is public service. And we incentivize other professions. We need nurses. We need teachers. We say if you go into those uh, professions in public service, we're going to help relieve some of your student loan debt. I think we should be expanding and including farming in that as well. So that's a way to help incentivize the next generation of farmers to go to an ACES the School of ACEs, or to get trained up on agriculture and precision farming, et cetera. So, and then once they do and they bring those skills to their farm, we can help them offload some of that student debt that they might have, just like other public servants, um, those that go into public service, we get the, give them that opportunity. We should do the same in agriculture. You know, I haven't introduced this yet, but just as like a sneak peek, I'm also working on finalizing a bill um, around how do we help young farmers get access to capital into markets. That's really a unique challenge that if you're starting out um, to start up a farm and you're younger, maybe you didn't inherit the family farm or maybe you don't have a family farm that you're taking over. Um, there are some unique challenges that those farmers face. Uh, getting access to the capital to make the investments needed to be successful. And so I'm looking at finding ways to incentivize more uh, loan programs and grant programs that are going to support those younger farmers. Definitely. Well, great to hear that. You have so many great things in the works there. Good. Um, Yes, as we keep going, you know, t talking a little bit about Farm Bill, um, one of Illinois Corn's main priorities in the Farm Bill is crop insurance. And yep. I know so many people know that's so important. So what are you, you know, working on to ensure that this continues to be, um, you know, a vital part of this bill for our family farmers in Illinois? Illinois? Yeah, crop insurance is so important. I mean, as you know, Haley, it is the safety net that farmers have in unexpected times, and we face a lot of those unexpected times right now. The 13th Congressional District, we get hit with tornadoes. We get hit with flooding on the most western side of the district from the Mississippi. These are things that are now happening on an annual basis, not just a once every 10 year or, or more flood. Um, and so for farmers that are farming in those areas, they need support in those times of uncertainty. And that's really ultimately what crop insurance is all about, is providing that level of support to farmers. It's also a bipartisan issue. Um, and so I think what I hear from Republican and Democratic colleagues is, uh, by and large, you know, support for crop insurance, making sure, um, you know, we're not supporting any riders um, to crop insurance in the farm bill that might change or tweak some of the benefits of it. So we want to make sure that it's properly maintained and you'll have an advocate for me in the farm bill on that. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of going, continuing on with a little bit of our farm bill talk. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a big topic right now. Do you have any insight in, you know, the timeline of, you know, the rest of this session and what that's kind of looking like for you? Um, but I think that, you know, it's going to be continuing to move down the road. I think the uh, Farm Bill actually really technically expires around September. We have a lot of work to do between now and then. My hope is that we'll get it done this year, uh, certainly before the next election season really rolls around, um, because family farmers are depending on us to get it done. And that's what I came to watch 
Washington to do is to get to the work of it, to get some things done, work with people, Democrats, Republicans to get that accomplished. So I'm still very hopeful we're going to finally make, you know, real progress in getting it done. Well, great. We're glad to hear that you're hopeful. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then anything, do you have any other comments about your support of agriculture in Illinois and just what you're continuing to do um, in your time during in Congress? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think that there is just a lot that is in the Farm Bill that provides a lot of opportunity. Um, so whether it's in the research title, which I'm very interested in, you know, continuing to be a very strong advocate for, as you mentioned, protecting our crop insurance, supporting the growing industry around biofuels. Um, those are kind of the top priorities that I, I certainly have. And so um, I think we covered a lot of them. I look forward to keeping you updated on the progress we make. Yes, wonderful. Well, thank you so much again for your time. Um, sure. We just appreciate being able to have this relationship with you and just yeah. um, hear all the great things that you're doing to support, um, you know, the Illinois corn farmers. So absolutely. Really it. Yeah, thanks, Haley. Sounds <laughs> yes. good. Let, we'll keep you posted.